Welcome to 60 Seconds, the game where you have to try and get all of your family together along with some supplies and make it down into a bunker before the atomic bomb hits. Uh, I have tried this game out. It is pretty interesting. Um, the storyline is kind of what I'm after and I figured I would actually put it up on the channel while I was trying it for a couple of times. There is a challenge mode where you can complete different challenges. I'm... Hello! Okay, that. I know that. I know this game. Anyway, different types of challenges. This one I've tried quite a few times, still haven't managed it. I suck at gathering supplies in this game. I really, really do. But in the classic mode, you have the atomic drill, which gives you the tutorial. The apocalypse, where you have to gather your materials and survive in the bomb shelter. Scavenge is basically where you just run around your house trying to get the supplies. Kind of a little bit dull, to be honest. And then survival, it packs your bunker out with random things and your job is to survive. You don't have to gather the supplies yourself, it's just random. To give you the full tutorial, I would probably need to do Apocalypse. Though this is not my favorite mode, I'd rather go get past all of this and go straight into survival. To me, it's more fun. But this is part of the game, so we're going to do it. Uh, the full atomic experience. Scavenge around your house for supplies and then survive the post-apocalypse in your fallout shelter. Fat man is normal. We are going to go for little boy. Why are we going to go for little boy? Because I need a couple of extra seconds to get my bearings in this daggum house. Because crap moves. And I don't like it. Alright, so we've got 20 seconds of exploration time at the very beginning to figure out where we want to stand. Health issues are rare, which it says rare. What it actually means is it's going to happen all the time. And let's see. Stocked shelter, unwanted, packed suitcase, holiday luggage, troubles, sometimes. Let's just begin this. Just going to try and give you a quick taste of what this game is all about, guys. All right, we've got 20 seconds. 20 seconds to figure out where things are that we want to grab. There's one kid, two kids. There's a wife. Let's go ahead and stand near her because she is the furthest away. And I'm going to grab that mask back behind her as well, I think. Oh, yeah. Honey! 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 There's a problem. She's just sipping on her tea like nothing's ever happening. Got her! Grab that. Grab that. And make a dash for it. Now, this is the part that I really don't care for. It's the trying to get around everything. Trying to get all your stuff together. Oh, well, let's grab that map. That's, that's handy sometimes. Alright, now let's go grab my other kid. Where the hell did she go? Okay. No! 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 Give me that kid. Give me that water. Let's go. Get off of the stuff and things! Okay, now I've pretty much grabbed all the supplies I can from around the house. The only thing I've got is the stuff that's right here. That's really the only thing I've got time for. Uh, what else is over here that I might be able to grab? Oh yes, med supplies. Yes, please. Thank you. Do we have time for anything else? Probably not. We gotta make sure we actually make it in there as well. And that's what we've gotta work with. Needless to say, this isn't gonna go so well. If you have a bomb shelter, put the stuff in the bomb shelter. That's why you have it. <sighs> Day one. So let's take a look. We've got our mask. We've got our first aid kit. We've got three bottles of water. That's not very much. A few cans of soup. Some playing cards. An axe. Uh, it's not great. And apparently there was some water in here. So, you know, that's something. And now we have to sit here in our bomb shelter and survive. And what we've got is this little journal. Stop it. This little journal right here to help us out. All of us made it into the shelter just seconds before the blast. That was a close one. As long as we're all together, we can make it work down here. We will remember hearing canned soup is healthy for you. We can't remember bringing those supplies down here to the shelter, but we're not complaining. We probably should have stocked it better anyway. So we got playing cards, we've got the axe, and we've got a lock, which is actually pretty good. Our shelves are full of cans. We've eaten from cans. We'll sleep on cans. We'll even talk to cans. Some of us already do. Okay. Plenty of water means we don't have to worry about it for some time. Time to ration supplies. Everybody just got down here. We were up in the house. Everybody should have eaten, so we're not going to give anybody anything yet. Being safe down here is much better than being pulverized out there, but that doesn't mean we don't want to go outside. Maybe we should take a walk soon. The neighborhood is probably much more peaceful since the bombings. I want cake. 
And that is the end of day one. The goal is to survive as long as possible. Oh, look at the shave. Ow, ow, ow. Shake it off, shake it off. Prickly arms, prickly arms. Am I blocking anything that's on the screen? I don't think so, okay. Yeah, because you can see the... Yeah, okay, you can see it. Okay, nothing in here has changed. I don't see anything new. It's still better safe down here than dead up there. It's impressive how well Mary Jane is handling the situation. She looks fine today. This is where we start getting an idea of whether or not people are starting to get antsy, if they're hungry, if they're thirsty. Timmy was good, well at least he was five minutes ago. Everything seems okay with Dolores and there isn't much going on with Ted. No trouble, nothing new. Time to ration supplies. Well, it's been one day since the blast. I think we're going to be okay. Our neighborhood is still highly radioactive. Trips to the surface are a big risk for our health. We're only on day two after the storm. We're not going out yet. I typically wait until day six or seven before sending anybody out with a mask and only if I have a mask. Something is serious about something on. Someone is very serious about banging on the hatch. We're scared to open it, but it might be good news, right? If we were gladly welcome a friendly face, even if it was our neighbor, Ned, we're pretty sure that if there was any reason why our town got bombed, he would be that reason. Shall we open it? I have not been faced with this one before. Sure. Let's... It's day two. Should we open it? It's probably pretty radioactive, right? No, we're not opening the door. Never mind. If it was like day seven or something, I'd say sure, but we're not letting that radiation in. No, go away. Day three. Bum, bum, bum. Everybody still seems very, very bored. Okay, the banging has stopped after a while and whoever was behind the door left. We have no idea who it was. We never will find out. Something to drink. Something to drink. Can't rain thirsty. Okay, all three of them are thirsty. Kind of figured now would be the time when we need to start giving a little bit of water to everybody. And this is when we're going to start giving out supplies. Okay, contamination is strong, and we don't have a radio to check whether or not the contamination has actually let up. I just average it about seven days before I send anybody out, as long as we've got food. If there's one person we truly miss, it's our great Uncle Terry. He used to tell us brilliant stories about turtles, elephants, and wizards. It would be so reassuring to hear of one of these stories again, and yet, we don't have a photo of him. Just memories. Uh, we don't have the book, so if it's crossed out right here, we didn't gather whatever it was in order to be able to use that uh, particular option. Oh well. They got some good music down here in this bunker, guys. Good music. And so we hear, left for no photos, no news, no happy thoughts. The world is too cruel. She isn't worried. Mary Jane isn't worried. Timmy's okay. Dolores is alright. And it's been pretty calming for Ted. Okay, now. We typically go through more water than we do soup. And sadly, soup does not count as a fluid, but I want to keep everybody's strength up. Why? Because we're going to have to go out for expeditions. I want to be able to keep all of their health up in order to make sure we can go out. We're not going to do a expedition for tomorrow. That's what this tab is. is uh, it's telling us who is confident, who is good and healthy, who is fed up or whatever, and whether or not we should start a preparation for the expedition tomorrow. And no, at this point, we're not. Always thought life would be much better than it was before we got nuked. Now we think we can much better in in a way. Not that much has changed. <sighs> Cake. Pie. Okay. Next day. Alright. Not seeing anything new. I can still hear the radiation very well outside. What will we make of today? Will it be tomorrow? Let's... So let's make it right. Mary Jane is feeling safe. Timmy's okay. Dolores is all right. No new problems for Ted. Tomorrow I will give out supplies again. Not today. All right. Should we go ahead and start prepping for a day six travel? Um, a day six. No, I think we're going to wait till actually just day seven. It's hard being down here, living here. We need to make the best of it or else we might find ourselves in even more trouble. Yes. So between the first day of getting down here and the second, the seventh day, I really don't do much anything besides just read how everybody's doing. All right, it's easy to feel a bit down when living underground like this. No sunshine, no sky. We need to get rid of that pessimism and try to bring some cheerfulness into our lives. Mary Jane is thirsty. He doesn't need much. Timmy needs to drink. Dolores has to drink. Ted needs a few drops of water. I figured today was going to be the day for the water. Awesome. Now, the what I'm doing is clicking on which supplies I want them to have, and if you want them to have both, you can click on their picture and it'll give them both. 
Usually before I send somebody out that next day, I go ahead and feed them and water them, you know, like they're a plant so they can grow big and strong. Okay, day six. It looks like the area is still irradiated. Going to the wasteland right now might be unsafe unless you don't mind getting sick. Yeah, well, we're going to go because we've got this little mask right here and we're going to try it out anyway. What's that sound? A galloping horse? We rushed to the door. We were greeted by two men dressed like they'd come from a medieval fair. We identified the source of the sound. It was them holding onto two rocks and hitting them against each other constantly. While the others were skipping and pretending to be a rider, they said that they were looking for some antique cup, but they had gotten lost, and they would be most grateful if they would let us check our map, and provided we have one. <laughs> it's a pretty good movie, guys. It's a pretty good movie. Okay. Yes, they can use our map. Completely harmless. Completely. All right. They were only way too impressed with their medieval outfits to decline, so we showed them our map and pointed at the location of our shelter. They quickly found their bearings and rewarded us with kindness of a set of checkers, and then swiftly rode off, or ran off. We hoped that they find what they're looking for, and they gave us a chess set. It's always better when we are when things are calm. Luckily, nothing new has happened to Mary Jane today. Despite dire circumstances, Timmy is very brave, Dolores is fine, and there's not much going on with Ted. So everybody's going okay, but today I'm sending Ted out. So Ted gets food and water. Everybody else just gets food because they had water yesterday. And we're going to take Ted. And he's going to take that. And he's going to go outside. That's with that page four, just setting all of that stuff up. Just a really quick look at this. It's a pretty cool game. Uh, some of the storylines I still haven't run across, some of which I have that I already know about. There isn't anything new bothering Mary Jane. Tim seems okay. Dolores is fine. Ted's left for the surface and he took that equipment. Time to ration supplies. Should I wait a day? Everybody seems okay. I don't want to run out of water before Ted gets back. If there's anyone who can rescue us from this hellish situation, it's our government. You can bad bath them all you want, but that probably means you're either a naysayer or a commie. We're good citizens and we've been paying our taxes regularly, so we're sure Uncle Sam is coming to get us. Well, except for that one time at when we never mind the government people are coming and we should keep our ears and eyes open for any sign of them and we would need a radio for that which i didn't grab there wasn't one close so we can't listen out on the radio to find out about that so that ending is probably closed unless ted can find one somebody's drawing pictures on my wall timmy is that you if there's anything we uh if there's one thing we need to do is to use the radio on a regular basis to catch emergency broadcasts that might be transmitting in our area it's either that or it's tro strolling around outside waiting to get picked up. The first option sounds a bit more sane. Everyone has to drink, have a drink sometime. Okay, uh, everybody... Oh my goodness. Okay, there are some bad thoughts going on here. I need you all to stop that. Here, have some water. Calm down. Chill. Confined places are not very friendly environment. And we quickly got into an argument over some trivial things. If this keeps on, we might find ourselves in a nasty place. Yeah, this, this, this right here, this looks nasty. Stop that. No going insane to my stuff. I'm really worried that we might have sent Tim out a little too soon. We start to argue for how long? Mary Jane didn't cause any trouble today and no, let's see. Mary Jane's okay, Timmy's okay, and everything's calm for Dolores. So everybody's good. Nobody needs any food or water. It looks like everybody's fine whenever you look at their picture. Let's, let's ration. Okay, we are not alone. There's a huge, hairy, bunny beast that seems to be hiding in one of the pipes. It's been poking its head out, eyeing our measly food stash. We can't let it get out. We cannot let it be in here when we sleep. I think we need to take care of that. What do you think? We're gonna waste our axe, aren't we? Oh, oh. Somebody did not waste the axe. I am shocked. Our cans are saved. Too bad for the hairy mutant. Guess we're on top of the food chain. Good for us. Mary Jane is safe, even though it's a coffin-sized shelter. Timmy's okay, and Dolores is fine. I think today everybody's going to get a little bit of water. Just keep moods up. We decided to have some fun today and play a game or two. The first one was picking the game we're going to play. This took us most of the day, and we still haven't made up our minds. Come on, Tim, come back. I'm starting to worry. After about three days, you can almost guarantee they're not going to come back. 
We played hide and seek. The longest round we were able to play lasted for around 10 seconds, and that's only because the lights went out for a moment. Oh, uh, no. Hide and seek in here? Where are you going to hide? Okay. Mary Jane seems fine. Nothing to report with Timmy, and Dolores is doing quite well. I think today is food day, right? Today is food day, so let's do that. How about that lake we were going to visit in the past few years? It would be so good to find ourselves there, far away from all this madness. Swim a little, maybe take a boat ride, even if the whole place turned into Atomicville. Somebody still wants cake. They're starting to make me hungry. Do you want cake? I want cake. Some triple chocolate cake would be really great. Day 13. We got a knock at the door. Is that good or bad? What is this? What, what is Timmy? Timmy, I know that was you, dude. Hopefully the time will leave. Oh no, he's still not back. Hopefully the time to leave will come soon. Mary Jane says she's fine. Timmy's okay, and Dolores says there's nothing new to report. Time to ration. I think today is a skip day. We had water and then we had soup. Today is a skip day. Our hideout was approached by a man we didn't know. He claimed he used to be an accountant, but now he survives as a trader and a gambler. He offered us a card game. For a bet of two water bottles, shall we play? I haven't actually done this one. Would we win against... I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. You're not getting our water. That just seems like a huge gamble. We don't have a whole lot. <gasps> Tim is back! Tim is back! Dude! What'd you bring us? You got a flashlight? I see a flashlight. I don't see nothing else. At least you didn't ruin the mask. Gambling is a terrible habit. What kind of an example is that to set for the kids? We need supplies, but we're not getting them like that. We'd sooner rob someone. It has happened, folks. It has happened. We sent the man away. Good riddance. Ted has safely returned from the voyage to the surface. Plus one mask because he brought the mask back. We found a... Found the Tangent Hotel in ruins, but they're pretty to look at, though. Look through. Pieces of furniture, suitcase, and other hotel supplies were scattered all over the place. Now we know the secret of the restaurant chef. It's tomato soup. No wonder they are a five-star hotel. We got one can out of that. Every room was stocked with water bottles for guests, and a few of them remained relatively untouched by the explosion. We got one water. And a flashlight. One of the luggage bags was filled with an array of different flashlight models. Exciting! We tried them all, but only one was working. D Why didn't you grab the bag, dude? Dude, we could have taken the bag. Okay, Mary Jane's thirsty. Timmy is doing fine. Dolores, okay. Dolores needs water and Mary Jane needs water. The ladies need water and Ted is hungry. So Ted is hungry. Ladies need water. Oops. He's going to need water too, though. But he hasn't said he needed it, so let's just skip over that. Ring, ring! There we were, thinking we could never hear the telephone signal again. When suddenly a phone starts ringing from somewhere outside, we figured it was someone on a booth across the street. Should someone go answer it? Yeah, let's send Timmy. Why not? It's just across the street. It's not like there's an atomic bomb outside. Why are you judging me? He needs to get outside. A little boy needs to get outside, you know? When we answered the phone, we could clearly hear a gasp of relief from the caller. They introduced themselves as survivors from a nearby town of Hill Valley. We had started exchanging information when the call was cut short. Something must have gone wrong on their end. We hope they will get back to us. We were so afraid for Timmy, but he has come back and he's safe. Mary Jane is doing good. No news on Timmy. Everything seems okay with Dolores and Ted is still hungry. Whenever they go out... They wind up needing extra supplies in order to get back in there. And Ted is in no condition to go outside, but since he's back, we can send somebody else. Who should go next? Mary Jane has a tendency of destroying and losing stuff, I hate to say, but she does. You know, I'm not hugely keen on sending Timmy very many places, but... Maybe this time I'll try and send Timmy and see how he does with, you know, making sure things don't get messed up. If there's anyone who can rescue us from the Cellus situation, it's our government. You can badmouth them all you want. It's the same message from before. Trying to give us the option of turning on the radio, which we do not have. Okay. Kind of getting low on supplies. Alright, same transmission. I mean, same message about the government. Uh, Mary Jane's feeling fine. Uh, Timmy is doing fine, which is good because he's supposed to go out. Uh, Dolores is in a good mood, and Ted is still hungry. 
Ted is still hungry, and we're fisting to send Timmy out. Let's give him a little bit of water. And I haven't actually sent Timmy on any of these expeditions before. I'm going to give him the mask because it's still irradiated outside. We want to make sure he's safe. Don't want him having to come back with a cold. Those med kits heal one person. That's it. Not to mention, you know, if Timmy doesn't come back, well... Can we spare some water? Mary Jane's been asking about it all day. Timmy went out to the wasteland. Uh, Dolores needs some water and Ted is hungry, so... Uh, Mary Jane needs water. The ladies need water and... Okay. He needs both and la both the ladies need water. Water is getting a bit scarce. A bit scarce, guys. We know very little about what's going on outside. It'd be a good idea to find out more. Maybe discover if anyone else made it to safety. A radio could help us with this, which we do not have. It would be nice if someone came back from an expedition with a radio. It's always a possibility. You wouldn't figure Timmy would go very far. They say ignorance is bliss. Another day without a clue as to what might be going on that out necessarily kill us. It's impressive how well Mary Jane is handling the situation. Dolores is quite calm and Tim has I mean Ted has finally rested. Okay, everybody's doing fine, so I'm going to leave off the food and water for the day. A sleazy-looking trader carrying an equally scruffy bag over his shoulder paid us a visit. He offered us a simple one-time deal for a one can of soup. We get what's in the bag. All of its contents. We can't see what's inside, and the trader gives us an angry glance as every time we take a step towards a mysterious bag. Should we make the deal? What's in the bag? I hate to waste a can of soup on this. Okay, we got a kitty! The cat's out of the bag now. Awesome. As soon as the door closes behind the trader, the bag starts to violently shake, emitting screeches, hellish sounds, terrified, we backed up against the wall. When the beast finally escaped, it turned out to just be an angry house cat. The feline gave us a menacing look and promptly sat down on the corner to clean itself. The caller's name says... Shirokov. Is that a name? Minus one can of soup. Mary Jane isn't worried. Well, I'm glad. Uh, Dolores would love to eat. Alright, Dolores is getting a little bit packish. Give her a little bit of food since we wasted some food. Confined spaces are not very friendly environments. We quickly got into an argument over some trivial things. If this keeps on, we might find ourselves in a nasty place. See, see, this kind of artwork is unnecessary, guys. I do hope Timothy comes back. And he didn't. Daggummit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I saw that. We stopped arguing, but for how long? Team seems to have developed an allergy to our furry guest. He's been coughing and sneezing all night. We should try giving him some medication. Mary Jane's diet could use a little bit more food. Mary Jane is thirsty and has to drink something. Dolores has to drink sometimes. And if Ted doesn't have to drink, he might become an... Ted became infected with something. Okay. So everybody needs a drink. And who was it that needed food? I think it was Mary Jane. Yes. And sadly, we're going to have to use up this because I don't want him getting really bad. We opened the bunker door this morning to let in some fresh radioactive air and we discovered a small suitcase on our doorstep. There was a note on it and the neighbor's neighborhood seemed to be empty. Should we take a look inside? Yes? Maybe there's some supplies? I, maybe they ran by, they were carrying supplies and dropped it? I don't know. Well, he's looking better, but now she looks sick. She's got a snot hanging out of her nose. Awesome. And you tore it all apart. It was an innocent looking bottle of water, so we took a sip. We thought we got lucky, but it was a lie. Either that water was irradiated, or it was some kind of biological weapon. It made us all feel pretty sick. Why did you just drink it? Why would you- <sighs> Daggum it. Mary Jane caught something. If there was anything to report about Dolores, we would. This is where we would have written it. That that's unnecessary, guys. That, I think that's being a smart ass. He recovered from his sickness. Okay, Mary Jane is thirsty. You are, and we can't click that because we no longer have the first aid kit, which sucks. Um, this is basically the same thing. I think that picture sums it all up. They're not happy down here in this little hole in the ground. Timmy! Timmy! Timmy's back! He's like, look, we've got a kitty! Timmy, we got a kitty! I, I think your dad's allergic to him, which is kind of sucky, but whatever. We're trying our best to remain calm from the situation. Oh, he brought a he brought a radio. 
We hope help comes soon. We're so afraid for Timmy, but he came back? What was that? Is it a bird? Is it a stockbroker? Is it a bicycle repairman? No, it's the air aid airdrop. It was an excellent time to leave the bunker in search of supplies. Two things of food. Some crates were filled with weird stuff. Why do they drop a crate full of rubber ducks? At least one of the smaller crates had a few bottles. Why would you drop rubber ducks? Why didn't you bring a rubber duck? We could use a rubber duck. A bunch of folks were having a gunfight over several crates of dropped supplies. One group emerged victorious and chased the off the other opponents. One of the guns from the fight was left behind. Timmy brought us a gun. Dude! You went out there and came back with some better supplies than your father did. Our neighbors from the other shelter gave us a radio. They said that they found it in one of their dropped crates, but they already had one working. Uh, Mary Jane is still sick. Timmy is hungry and tired. Dolores is pretty fatigued. And there isn't much going on with Ted. Ted's alright. Alright, uh, Timmy is hungry and Mary Jane is sick. Timmy is hungry. So, I mean, he did pretty good. The only thing we possibly need right now is another med kit, which would be pretty sweet. Alright, so we need another trip going. Ted is gonna have to go. Ted is definitely gonna have to go. Uh, we're not certain about the situation on the surface. The trip could be risky, but yeah, we, we definitely need to keep going out. We can keep sitting on our backsides here with this little bunker. We can start thinking about ways of getting as far as possible from the radioactive wasteland. All right, now we finally have a radio. We can use this, but now they're not asking about the government. Let's see, who would have thought that the Reds were ruining such a lovely neighborhood? Really? Okay. Maybe we could find out some good information. Okay, oh my gosh, what is going on here? Is she, was that from her eating? We knew it! The government's not fallen! They're coming to save us! They didn't give us exact dates of their radio transmission, but we're sure that they would keep us learning for long. They said they'd been in touch for a couple of days and told us to wait for further instructions. Mary Jane's pretty fatigued. Timmy should eat. Water needs Dolores and Ted... Water needs Dolores. Dolores needs water and Ted is hungry. Okay. Uh, water. Food. Timmy needs to eat, and I can't remember what it said Mary Jane needs. She's she's just tired. Let's give her a little bit of water, because you know when you're sick, you kind of need that water to keep that health up. Alright, we are taking him, and he's taking... Taking the mask. I really wish we had a suitcase so you could carry more, but, you know, whatever. Should have sent Timmy out again. He came back with better stuff. I seriously wonder if... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Okay. Jeez. I, I, I unplugged myself. I got my leg stuck on my earphone cord. I do apologize, folks. That was... That was very productive of me. Hi, kitty! I still can't remember your name, though. Let's see. Mary Jane's still sick. Timmy's hungry. Dolores is fine. And Ted left for the surface. So, Timmy needs some food. Alright, guys, we are getting a little bit on the low side. Shabrak is. Sherikov is still a fresh addition to our little family, so we need to keep an eye on it. And believe it or not, just today we noticed that something was on his collar. It seems to be a metal plate with an address on it, and it's not far. We should take a quick trip and see what's there. Nah. We already got one person out, nobody else is going out right now. I'm gonna keep everybody contained. I don't want people getting kidnapped. People are already looking a little, uh. She's looking a little fatigued. I think she needs some food. This cat belongs to us now. It's our new, dear, friend, and valuable addition to our bunker. We managed to use it as a pillow for a whole ten seconds <laughs> yesterday before it almost scratched our eyes out. Clearly, it's very fond of us and is staying, and that's final. Uh, there isn't anything new bothering Mary Jane. She's probably going to die of being sick because we don't have any med kits. Timmy's in terrible shape. We need to give him some water. And Dolores is not eating for a while, so Dolores needs some food, and Timmy needs some water. Uh, how are we doing... Let's go ahead and give you some water and you some water. We're going to have to go a little bit lenient on the food. Sharkov seems to be fond of our checkerboard. Its favorite game during stretches of extreme boredom and silence in the shelter is pushing the checker pieces off the table as it gazes intently at whoever happens to be sitting the closest. The sound of the checkers hitting the floor every 10 seconds is getting on nerves and we're considering taking the game away. Should we let Sharkov play with the checkers? Yeah, uh, there's a chance he's gonna mess it up, but, uh, 
I mean, seriously. It's a cat. If you don't let him play with that, he's gonna find something else to play with. And there are meaner things he could play with. Probably just drive everybody in here bonkers. Okay, as soon as we allowed him to play with the checkers board, Sharkroft has instantly got bored of it. Let's see, that's how it usually works. If you give it to him, they don't want to play with it anymore. It sat on top of it for a whole afternoon, though, leaving us with no entertainment whatsoever, the selfish bastard. At least it didn't break anything. Mary Jane is quite hungry, Timmy is fatigued, and Dolores is given... Okay, you need to eat. I kind of feel like everybody needs to eat, especially Dolores, because she's looking pretty bad and so is Timmy. And I hate to do that because we're kind of running low. But at this point, everybody's kind of doing bad. I can tell by looking at them. There's some radio chatter about airdrops from the military. It's about time. All those taxes had to pay for a crate or two for us, right? Should we head out to- oh, of course. He's got the mask, so we can't go get it. Dang it. <sighs> See, hey, I gave y'all food. Y'all should be putting on some weight. It was too dangerous to go out there without any protection, so we decided to stay indoors and listen to the radio. The static is so relaxing. Uh, Mary Jane is doing good. Timmy seems okay. And uh, Dolores is in a good mood. I hope it'll stay this way. Everybody's fed and full, so everybody's doing all right. I kind of don't want to give them anything else right now. This dreadful science is becoming boring, and like every happy model family, we don't have many things we can talk about. Is there anything we can do about that? Anything at all? Yes, let's listen to the radio. Turn on some tunes! What do we got? Not really picking anything up there. Ah, oh, how fortunate we took the radio with us. We could probably listen to some music. They'll still play music out there, don't they? Mary Jane is doing all right. Timmy doesn't look like it, but he's a strong boy. Life is hard for Dolores. Everybody's doing okay. Let's give everybody some water. I hate to do that because we're really, really running low. If he doesn't actually make it back, there's a chance everybody in here will die. We found some weird mushrooms growing on one of the walls. Food shortage is no laughing matter, so maybe it'd be a good idea to grab the mushroom and bite it, or two. What's the worst that can happen? No, 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 no. You just don't eat random mushrooms, dude. That's a bad idea. You wind up even... See, look how bad she is. She's actually got the shakes and stuff right now. And if he doesn't come back with a med kit, she is likely going to die. That's how all of them would be if y'all tried to eat mushrooms. I bet you. I bet you. Okay, we may be hungry, but there are just some things we'll never eat. Wall fungus is one of them. If we don't cure Mary Jane soon, who knows what'll happen. Timmy might not look like it, but he's doing okay. And Dolores is in a good mood today. So Mary Jane's not doing well at all. And I hate to do this, but in order to keep her strength up, hopefully for him to come back, I'm going to have to give her some supplies. Holes in our bunkers aren't getting as big, as big enough for time. The holes in our bunker walls aren't just big enough for cat rats. They can easily fit a cat. We noticed that Sharkroft has been sneaking outside every other night and coming back in the morning. Maybe it's found something edible nearby and likes to go out for a midnight snack. If that's the case, we want it want in on this plan. Should we follow it next time? Yeah, follow him. If he's got a strategic plan because he hasn't eaten any of our food, we haven't been feeding him. So what is he eating? Let's follow him. What's he got? Some juicy bits. Yay, he's back! Please, did you- Oh, yes, 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 you brought a med kit. Thank God. Sharkov took us to an old junkyard that's inhabited by a lone resident, a self-proclaimed scientist living in an old bus converted into a lab to conduct his experiments. The doctor seemed happy to have his pet back, although the cat showed no enthusiasm at the prospect. Do cats ever show enthusiasm at anything? I mean, honestly. We exchanged some small talk, but truth be told, we were kind of in a hurry to get out of there. The scientist did seem completely sane, and he did mention something about escaping the wasteland in a spaceship. That sounds familiar, too. Ted has safely returned. We believe the expedition to be a wasteland to be followed by strangers. We should be more cautious. <sighs> he still didn't come back with a suitcase, so carrying more than one item at a time, and he broke the mask. Daggummit. Well, I went out for three trips. It's okay. It turns out that calling an ambulance is not an option anymore. We reached the hospital, it was in ruins, but parts of it turned out to be standing, more or less. We decided to go in through the rubble and make the best of it. The canteen had a respectable supply of tomato soup, so you only brought one? It looks like this was the only thing that fed their patients, now they're 100% sure it's healthy. There's plenty of bottles of liquid in the wards, peroxide or not, water is water and beggars can't be choosers. Please tell me that's not peroxide. 
It wasn't hard to find a fully equipped first aid kit, for after, after all, it's a hospital. And our gas mask was damaged. Mary Jane is rather sick. Despite the dire circumstances, all the trouble we're going through, Timmy is very brave. Today is okay for Dolores and Ted is hungry. Okay, so obviously this is what needs to happen and you can have a bit of water. So we've got, let's see. So we've got her medicated. We've got him taken care of. This morning we were surprised to find a letter on our doorstep. It's not signed and it contained a location and a time for a meeting tonight. And a few sentences, it said things like, we're friendly, come unarmed, send one person. We have no idea who could have been sent before, but we're guessing it's our only chance to find out. Who are we sending? Timmy. Timmy, you are a very brave boy. You're going. They're not likely to kidnap a kid, right? They might cook him, but they wouldn't just kidnap him, right? It's true, it's all true. They really were just like us. We arrived at the rendezvous unarmed and on time, and we were greeted by a friendly-looking group of survivors. They're being led by twins, a brother and a sister, who seem to be friendly enough. They ask us some questions and promise to stay in touch. We were so afraid for Timmy, but he has come back from the wasteland and is safe with us now. Mary Jane is well, too. Timmy the is rested. Timmy. And if there's one thing we need, it's water for Dolores and Ted is hungry. Water for Dolores and... Water and food. Okay, we definitely need to send somebody else out. Uh, the day has come. We can't keep lying to ourselves. The shelters are big enough for all of us. Someone has to leave and make their own luck on the radioactive wasteland. But wait, what? You're evicting somebody? Okay, I've never been given this option. Who should go outside? Okay, Timmy is too little. Um, I'm gonna have to say Mary Jane. I did not think that this was gonna be a thing. She looks old enough, right? Why am I having to make this decision? Okay, she's gone. We just healed her too. Dadgummit! That was a waste. Why did y'all make me choose that? Mary Jane volunteered to leave the shelter without sharing her reasons. Maybe she's looking for adventure, or maybe she just doesn't like us very much. Either way, goodbye Mary Jane, see you in the next life. When we woke up today, we discovered that Shakaroff has somehow found his way back into our shelter. Does that mean it's staying for good? We're not sure what exactly transpired between the little guy and its owner. We asked, but it wouldn't tell. Obviously. Timmy is good. Well, at least he was five minutes ago. Today's been fine for Dolores, and Ted is hungry. Great. I have one less person I can send out. Dolores is gonna have to go out because uh, Timmy just went out not long ago. Today, the music from the radio stopped abruptly and instead we got to listen to a transmission from the army. We were almost halfway to the door when they started talking about evacuation, but it turns out there's something we need to do first. All survivors were asked to leave a sign that they were alive somewhere in their area. The exact location was given in geographical coordinates. We need a map to establish where that is. Huh. Yeah, people looking like crap. A quick glance at the map gave us all the information required. Left a message in the bottle. Timmy should eat something. Uh, Dolores is not eating for a while. Everybody's hungry. Of course everybody's hungry because we're so low on food. We are not going to last much longer. Who's going to go? She's going to go and she's going to take... Hmm. What should she take? I don't know. What about the flashlight? Map. Take the map. Maybe that'll help her locate some supplies better. And we just had a mission that told us something to do with our map, so maybe there won't be another one for a little while. Timmy's in terrible shape. We need to give him water now. Uh, he's got one foot in the grave. He needs drink. Okay, so they both need a drink of water. I just hope this water's gonna last. You allow a crash and a surprise shriek, shriek and a bit of debris falling from our ceiling truly has a recipe for the start of a good day. As it turns out, Sharkov has found a new toy, a bit of innocuous wiring that it ripped out of the wall. Who knows what the cable is for, but the lights are still on, so it can't be that important, right? Should we take the wire away from our fluffy friend and investigate it? Sure. Day 35. I was really hoping she got back really quick because we need food. We grabbed the cable and followed it to the rusty old truck parked outside our neighbor's driveway. Upon meeting, upon opening the door, we were confronted with two men wearing huge headphones who looked extremely surprised to see us. 
They were wiretapped our shelter. We were asleep and they were listening to everything we said. We gave them hell and marched back to our bunker. Timmy is on his best behavior. How long will that last? Ted is not complaining, at least not very much. All right, we're gonna have to skip it. The agents who were spying us are now out the door wanting to explain themselves. Should we hear them out? No, because you should not be spying on us. Jeez. Oh, Dolores needs to hurry up and come back. Seriously. Usually whenever we completely run out of something, suddenly everybody needs something. No discussions or deals are to be done with those that don't respect what little privacy we have, our home, our rules, and we don't need even to have a lot of them. Don't steal soup, don't waste water, and don't wiretap our walls. Goodbye. Like the good scout, Timmy is making the best of the situation, and Ted says there's nothing to worry about. So everybody's going all right. I should probably give them a little bit of water just to kind of tide them over, I hope. We stumble upon a weird signal when changing the radio frequencies. We were pretty sure that the, behind the layers of terrible static and screams, we could hear a voice. A voice speaking in a foreign language. Oh dear. What if it's the Soviets? Hmm. We should probably listen to it, but what about the children? Uh, yeah, listen to it. I mean, Timmy's not listening anyway. He's staring at the flashlight. And Dolores is not back yet. I don't know how much longer this is going to go on. We were relieved at first when we figured out it wasn't the Soviets we heard. Turns out it was the Canadians. Which isn't much better. Hey, dude, dude. Either way, they're foreigners and we couldn't understand what they were saying. Not a word. How disappointing. Most Canadians speak English, though. Well, not most, but a lot of them are French, too, right? Despite the dire circumstances and all the trouble we were going through, Timmy is very brave and Tim Ted has rested. I keep calling him Tim. Dude, I'm renaming you. Not getting any supplies. Timmy didn't say a word about it, but when he was outside, he scratched his hand on a wire or something other rusty pieces of metal, and his wound is not looking pretty, and we need to do something about it. We don't have a med kit. Let's chop his hand off. No, he didn't chop his hand off? Come on, we're supposed to go to the extreme. Things are getting stupid. Timmy was very brave. The idea of his wound being heated up was a bit painful, but it was soon over. The axe is in no shape to be used again, but Timmy seems better. I don't see any difference in his arms, though. Alright, both of them are fine, but y'all wasted the axe on it. Okay. Oh, boy. Should we give them water? Oh, they both said that they were fine. I, I'm gonna wait. It's so easy to es escalate silly arguments in close quarters doesn't help. We were chatty, and then suddenly we're fighting and fighting, and we hope we'll get over this. Dolores, please come back. With food. Oh, okay. The one can? You found one can? One can! Ugh, we stopped arguing for how long. We're glad to see Dolores has come back safely from the wasteland. Our little trip to the surface might have been spotted and followed. We should be more careful next time. Uh, the expedition went to a church. Uh, they weren't... They weren't sure what religion they followed. They were very eager to convince us that tomatoes were the source of all evil and eggplants were the only hope for salvation. An eggplant cult? You found an eggplant cult. Did they have eggplants, though? Cults just decided they wouldn't be needing holy water. We did need a bit of miracle work to turn the water. Huh? Do water bottles and full water bottles. Okay, well, we've got water. Uh, um, everybody's hungry. We've got one can. And there goes most of it. Okay, and Timmy needs water as well, and so does Ted. Okay, Dolores is alright, and yes, we are going out for another expedition because we do not have enough food. Uh, we got a bit scared today when the sun, when suddenly our map just fell off of the wall. Maybe our shelter is haunted. Maybe our shelter is haunted. When the map fell down, it revealed some sort of safe behind it. We don't remember installing it, but we could probably crack it. Well, we technically have this all the time in the world to do it. Should we try? Yeah, sure, sure. Let's let's do this. Crack that safe. What we got? Please be food. Was that another can of food? Because it looks like there's another can up there, please. Yes, it was a can of food. <laughs> oh, we are teetering on the edge. We're not certain how the map fell down. It was almost as if some ghost was playing tricks on. It's a friendly one. Inside the safe, we found some useful items, so 
We'll do this ghost the courtesy of not calling an exorcism. An exorcist. Why would you... Okay. Dolores is hungry again, and Ted says he's okay. And Timmy is fine. Okay, who will I take outside? It's gonna have to be him. I don't think Timmy is gonna last if we send him out again. And you are going to take... I'm gonna say the map. I keep thinking if I send the map with them, they'll be able to find new locations, get a little bit more story that I haven't seen before, or whatever. It would be nice if we could figure out a way of fixing our um, stuff, but apparently that's not going to happen. These poor guys stuck in here. Timmy seems okay, and Dolores has not eaten for a while. Actually, she has. She just being stingy, because she knows we don't have very much. Okay, the twins are back and they need our help again. Their group is getting pretty big and it's time to start building a small camp of their own. They already chose a place and we're about to start, but a lot but a lot of their people got injured in a recent raider attack. They're asking for meds so they can nurse their group back to health and get back to work as fast as possible. Dude, we don't have any meds. Sadly, we wasted on somebody who decided to leave. Sadly, there was nothing we can offer. We can't leave Timmy without water. Okay, both need water. I'm summarizing pages because a lot of it is the same exact text repeated. Um, oh, we were afraid the army wouldn't get back to us, but they eventually did. The next transmission was full of evacuation promises, but it ended in a big if. The speaker requested that any surviving groups armed with firearms were disposed of them before they get rescued. We don't know what this is about, but it sounds like violating our rights. On the other hand, are there any laws and rights left? Or is everyone for themselves? We're not getting rid of our firearm. Dude, you've got to be mistaken. That could be anybody on the radio. That and you, the government shouldn't ask you to get rid of your firearms. We decided to ignore those stupid orders. Who are they to tell us what to do? The US government? Well, they probably are, but that doesn't mean that they can take our guns. Over our dead bodies. No news is good news. And Dolores is finally rested. Time to ration supplies. We are not doing well. Okay, and they're fighting over trivial things like cat and mouse. I'm just gonna start using pictographs, people. Pictographs. And how are we doing now? Timmy's doing okay, and Dolores is doing okay. And everybody's doing alright. We're gonna save the rations. When someone's knocking at the door, we were suspicious and cautious, but after a few minutes of talking, it turned out it was just a group of old ladies who were at the tea party not far off from where the bombs had dropped. We thought it would only be good manners to talk to them face to face. When we opened the door, those old bats attacked us with their umbrellas, canes, and something that looked like a specked table leg. We need to fight back. Do we lock them out or do we shoot them? Chances are, if we use it, we might lose it, so I think I would rather save this and try to lock them out. Hopefully nobody gets injured in the process. Did that work? It doesn't look like either one of them were injured, though they both need a shower. I didn't think that small padlock would stop them, but it turned to be enough to scr turned out to be enough to discourage the unknown attackers. It seems that they gave this whole break in a fair shot, but ultimately gave up and left. Too bad the padlock is in no shape to be used again. We need to think of other ways to spite off bandits and other soup-hungry barbarians. Timmy should eat something. Uh, Annie needs something to drink. And Dolores needs water. And apparently there's some bad thoughts going on again. Timmy needs both and she needs some water. We're either going crazy or this entire shelter is crawling with little insects or worse. It's worse. They're spiders. And not some miniature ones. They're huge, furry, and very creepy beasts. We've got to do something about them and we have absolutely nothing. This would be pesticide, the Boy Scout manual, or a med kit. I'm not sure how a med kit would help, but we don't have any of that. Now there has been times that I had a... Okay. Ted has been outside for far too long and he's still not returned. We fear he isn't coming back. Great. I think we lost Ted. Oh, man. Lost the map too, dude. While we were sleeping, Sharkoff made short work of those pesky spiders that chased them around until all of them ran away through the cracks in the shelter walls. Let's hope they stay gone for good. 
like I was supposed to say, I've had a cat before, Sharkov as a matter of fact. He's, he shows up in a couple of different situations, but he chased off bugs. Though he didn't seem to chase off roaches that were already in the room before. So that's a thing. Timmy seems okay, and Dolores would love to eat. Okay. I can't send out Dolores because there has to be an adult left, but I can send out Timmy. I hate to do it, but he's the only one who can go. And of course, they're not doing so well. So, next day. Why do we have to lose him? Ted! Ted! Look at this, we are so bad off. Uh, no sunshine, no sky, pessimism. Okay, Timmy is brave, and Dolores is fit. And I'm saving what little bit we have for Dolores because... Okay, Timmy is going and I want you to take... Uh... This is kind of a last ditch effort. I don't really think any anybody's going to survive going out at this point. They don't have enough supplies. <sighs> but we're actually surviving for a long time. I don't think I've survived 48 days on this mode. He went outside, we don't know if he'll come back, and there's some water left. Dolores should get it. So, sure, you're gonna be here with that tiny little bit of water and that tiny little bit of soup all by yourself. What's that sound? Oh god, something or someone is below us. It's only reasonable to go and check it out. How about using that manhole? How about using that manhole in the corner? Okay, well, the flashlight's the only thing we have. Manhole? That doesn't sound good. Dolores, you got all of your limbs? It looks like you do. If we had a flashlight, it would probably be a meal for something that wasn't da that was down there. We're sure its vicious eyes look very reptilian, very vicious, very, very hungry. Or was it a dinosaur? Everything seems okay with Dolores. Man, if we should have been able to use the gun on that one. He gotten us some more food. Okay, Dolores is okay. We're gonna wait. She is um she's obviously getting stir crazy. Oh, Dolores is the one over here drawing these things. I didn't see that before. Dolores, you drawing on the walls. As long as we're safe, we can stay down here forever. Dolores and her cat. Everything's relatively calm. Okay, she can wait a little bit longer on the food. Uh, it's not the best time or place to make plans for the future, but we can't help thinking about... Well, who are you talking to, Dolores? We? Are you talking to the cat? The plans between you and your cat going to Toronto? You were just making fun of Cornadians. Cornadians? Words? Uh-oh, we got somebody at the door. Planning for our head is usually a good strategy, but for now we should be more interested in our plans for now. Dolores wants water. Alright. A friendly group of survivors we met a lot long ago, they, they want a med kit. The group is planning to build a small settlement for themselves. A lot of them were injured. This is exactly the same thing. Um... Yeah, that was the same thing. That's the same mission right there. I don't have any. Alright, Timmy, are you gonna come back? Uh, Dolores is doing quite well, and we couldn't help him. Alright, Dolores is doing okay. Another broadcast from military, a huge shock force. Not only did they postpone our rescue, they also all ordered all survivors to get rid of their firearms. Are they nuts? Are we supposed to defend ourselves? It better be worth it. <sighs> I'm just not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Even if they don't re rescue us and we die down here, that's just gonna be the way it is. Dude! You brought back foods! We decided to ignore those orders. We were afraid for Timmy, but he's back. Uh, it might sound paranoid, but we think someone's following us. Let's just hope this doesn't happen again. We spotted an untouched store with many products inside, including food other than tomato soup. A real treat in these post-apocalyptic times. We were about to reach it and a terrible noise made us stop in our tracks. Something heavy fell straight from the sky, crashed into the store, and destroyed it completely. After dust settled, we realized we were looking at a spaceship, just like in Timmy's comics. Could it be Saucerman from Mars? Then why does it bear an American flag on the side and a logo something called... Astro Citizen. Could it be an infiltration, crafty little alien buggers? Okay, we got two cans of soup. 
A tired old teddy bear with some supplies. He looked very upset. We cannot handle his judgmental button eyes. Oh no, you stole the stole the teddy bear soup. Uh, okay, and we've got a med kit. All right, and they're both hungry. I am doing a lot of paraphrasing because it would take me a long time to read all of this. And Dolores is pretty good shape, but the only person who can go out is Timmy. We never thought we'd live to see a dancing cockroach, and we still haven't, but we saw one that was nearly as big as a cat. Though the good news is they probably scared off any rats in the area. The bad news is they're huge and will probably attack anyone when they get the chance. We don't have anything. Alright. We underestimated the value of a cat in this environment. We thought that we had a cockroach infestation on our hands, but Sharkov took care of it while we were asleep. Was it reminding of us his haunting days before the bombs dropped? Was it mesmerized by the cockroach's glow? Or does it have an undeniable thirst for fresh cockroach blood? We'll never know why, but we're grateful that we don't have to deal with the insects ourselves any longer. Temmie is hungry. And Dolores needs a drink. I can't blame you there. Ah, uh, the game... We played a game of list the things you hate the most, and our neighbor's name kept coming up for some reason. That reminded us that the little weasel had a safe in his living room. We always wondered what's inside, but now it might be the time to finally find out. But who will do the honors of stealing the possessions for our, our, from our arch nemesis? Who will go outside? Can I send Dolores out even though she's the only adult? I don't think I can. Oh, you found some ammo. Nice. Some food would have been better, but you know. When we opened the safe, we heard a loud bang in the room filled with thick, nasty smoke that smelled of rotten eggs. The bastard booby-trapped the safe. Sure, it slowed us down, but it didn't stop us from taking his most prized possession. Take that, Ned. Too bad we won't ever get the stench off our clothes now. Oh, Lord. We were afraid for Timmy. He is back. He's safe. He's very hungry, and he's sick. Okay, Timmy is hungry. I'm going to wait on giving him any medication right now. And Dolores is in pretty good shape. Actually, we can't wait on giving him medication. He's the only one who can go out. Uh, we can't make preparations. We closed off the tiny shelter and our supplies are very limited. If we want to survive, it's time for desperate measures. We know there's a group of elderly people hiding in the ruins of the local retirement home. They must have supplies, and in our opinion, we need them more. The well-being of your neighbors is the most important thing in the world, right? Elderly people. You know what, usually I would say yes, but right now this run has gone on for 55 days, and I think the highest I've gotten is to like 64. I think we're good. No, we're not bandits. Timmy is cured and Dolor Dolores is doing well. Time to ration. We're not giving anybody anything. Dolores says she's fine. Timmy and Cindy out. Sending Timmy out is a bad idea. Uh, as a matter of fact, Timmy probably could eat. I need him as healthy as possible so he can go out and get more supplies. Uh, we could really use some, some more. We could really use some more supplies. We counted all of them today, and the numbers did not make us happy. Time to do something about it. We know a teacher from a local school managed to rescue a bunch of kids and laid them to a nearby building. They're relatively safe. We could really use whatever they have. We could really use it, right? No. If we're gonna go, we are gonna go. We're no bandits. Timmy needs water. Both of them need water. Which we are running out of. Uh, and we can't do anything again. As a matter of fact, it's just going to run out. Basically, the time is going to run out. I don't even know what that last one was. I think something ate our cat. I didn't even pay attention to what that last one was, but something took off with our cat. Uh, there goes the food. Dolores can't go out.
You just... <laughs> what happened? Uh, I, I, th I don't even know what that last thing meant. What happened? Okay, this is a different ending. I haven't received this ending yet. We've been exiled from our home and overwhelmed by the sheer number of furry beasts. Unable to fight them for one, more than one drop of soup, their claws and teeth were just too sharp for our soft flesh. We'll have to try our luck somewhere else. We'll miss the shelter life. Hope the little bastards are happy in our home. We spent 62 days in our shelter. Apparently, um, while we were playing with the refrigerator, trying to get it to work, it, uh... Is there any way to go back and actually... <laughs> oh boy. I'm gonna have to go back and actually fully read what it said because I was kind of spaced out. A little bit. The beginning of the end. 62, the house call. That was, that was a cute ending. The cats took over our bunker. Of course they did. We were driven away. Anyway, that is 60 seconds. Basically, you get your supplies, you hunker down in a bunker, and you hope like hell when the random number generator comes up, your number's not called. Because that can happen. And you uh, can get evicted from your bunker by a cat. You have a wonderful day, a wonderful night, and you stay shiny.